Okay, welcome back uh, students who are taking financial accounting and in this uh, series of videos we were uh, looking at the theory videos for chapter 7 um, which is on cash and receivables. Um, we're up to video number 7 and in this video we are going to talk about uh, notes receivable. Okay. Um, this here you should be already somewhat familiar with, so I'm just going to briefly go over a few things. Um, uh, and as a refresher, you know, we'll, I'll point you to the student community. Okay, um, if you had math for business and finance or math applications, you'll remember that to calculate interest, we uh, take our principal times our rate times our time, right? Um, on the student community, if you go under uh, academic groups, then business, and then math for business slash applications, uh, and you watch the theory videos for chapter 10 for simple interest, or chapter 12 for compound interest and present value, um, and that will cover, you know, how you calculate your interest. Um, if you haven't had, you know, the math for business and finance or math applications, then I suggest you go back to the community. Here is the direct web address, so pause the video, write this down, and type that into your browser or like a, uh, in order to get directly to that page. Or like I said, there's how you find it uh, by going through the student community. So I'm not going to go through all the explanations on how to calculate, you know, the interest. You know, I mean, it's basically principal times rate times time. What I will do in this video is to um, kind of give a, uh, an understanding of what notes receivable is. Right. Um, instead of notes receivable, think about accounts receivable. All right. Accounts receivable, what you're doing is, is you're extending credit to somebody else, to a customer, and saying, okay, I expect to be paid in 30 days. Okay. And if they owe you $1,000, you expect to receive that $1,000 in the 30 days. Notice you don't collect interest. Okay. With a notes receivable, um, and what we're talking about here is receivables, okay? So on your balance sheet, you know, you would have cash, accounts receivable, less allowance for doubtful accounts, which we had in the last video, so which would give us a net accounts receivable. And then the next um, line item would be a notes receivable. And basically what a note receivable is, is saying that you're extending um, notes in uh, notes. Okay, no, uh, I know I'm stuttering here, but I'm running into two different things here. It's easier to think of notes payable, okay, versus note receivable. They're two sides of the same coin. Just as you have accounts receivable um, as the opposite side of uh, the coin from accounts payable, meaning, you know, one business owes the other. You know whichever direction it is if they owe me you know that's an accounts receivable to me and for them they owe you know it's an accounts payable because they owe it right if i um, owe them that's an accounts payable for me but for them that would be an accounts receivable remember accounts receivable and notes and uh, accounts payable are two sides of the same coin it's the same thing with notes receivable and notes payable okay same exact thing all right, as our accounts receivable and accounts payable. But remember, notes are for a period of time generally between 30 days and one year. Okay, you would want to create a note. Um, after one year, now you're talking about having a loan, right? Um, and that would be a loan payable or a loan receivable. Okay. Um, the concept of your notes applies equally to loans. The only difference being is, is the time frame, okay? Um, and that's why we call it a receivable because it's uh, within 30, uh, within one year, okay? So you go from an accounts receivable, 30 days, then a notes receivable, um, up to one year and then after that that would be a loan receivable um, which is greater than one year all right so with the notes receivable 
um, you know, whatever the terms are, you know, I'm, I'm going to lend somebody, you know, say $5,000 at uh, 12% interest for six months, right? That would be a notes receivable. Right? Now, again, you can calculate the interest and blah, blah, blah um, on how to, you know, on how to do that. The important part of uh, keeping track of this is you're going to, um, and, and remember, you're going, when you're making that, when you're loaning the amount, all right, let's say it's 5,000. Remember what, you know, you have to make an, you have to make a journal entry for that. Okay. So you're decreasing your cash. So you're going to make uh, a credit to cash for the 5,000, and then you're going to debit your notes receivable for the 5,000. Okay. And so that would be your initial journal entry to record the notes receivable. Now, the thing about this here is, is that, you know, it's a notes receivable and with a note, you're collecting interest. And that's why I have this little section here called accruing interest revenue. Okay. Because yeah, you, you know, you're getting, you're gaining interest on that loan. All right. And that's revenue, right? So you'll have uh, an account called interest revenue. Now, the thing about it is, is that, you know, if the note is in this case here, we had said 5,000 at 12% for six months, right? That note isn't due until six months later. Okay. And if it's due six months later during that time, you know, it's accruing revenue and I mean, you're earning revenue and you're earning interest during that period of time. And so what you have to do is, is you have to make, um, you know, a calculation and you go back to, you know, the formula here in order to calculate your interest that you're accruing during that period of time. And when you're accruing it, you know, obviously you're crediting interest revenue because it's a revenue account. It's a sales account. And let's just say, I'm just going to make up a number here. Well, actually, let me, let me see if I can't real quick. 12%. Um, so um, 300. So I'm just going to use the number 50, okay, which is pretty close. Don't, you know, um, $50 a month. Okay, if I take 5,000 times 12%, that gives me 600. And, uh, and that since that's annual, half of that for six months is 300. 300 divided by the six months is $50 a month. Okay, and that's how I got, uh, I just come to this $50 here. So each month I'm going to generate $50 in interest revenue. Okay, that hasn't hit my books each and every month. Okay, so every month I have to book an entry to record that interest revenue. So I'm going to credit my interest revenue because it's the revenue account. And then I'm going to debit interest receivable. for the $50. Okay. Why? Because it's still owed to us. Right. So not only do you create a notes receivable account, but you also create an, uh, an interest receivable account, right? Interest in order to be able to record, you know, the accruing of that, in, that interest revenue from every month. Remember you're loaning the $5,000 that's receivable to you because you're expecting to get that back, right? That's, you own that 5,000. You're lending it out at a percentage and an interest. Well, you're not getting that money, that 5,000 back immediately. That would be, you know, in 30 days, that would be an accounts receivable. You're getting it for a longer period of time and it's accruing interest because, you know, you know, you know, the time value of money, you know, you're, and, you know, you're lending something out, you expect to get interest back on your money, but you're not going to get that interest until the end of the, the note receivable, the maturity date, which is six months down the road. So each and every accounting period, you have to, um, make an adjusting entry in order to be, re in order to record your interest revenue that you accrue 
for that period of time. So you figure out how much that amount is and you'll debit your uh, a, a new account called interest receivable because it's still owed, that interest is still owed to you, all right? And you'll credit interest revenue. So on your um, on your books, you'll have a notes receivable account and that'll have $5,000 in it. And then you'll have an interest receivable account. Well, for this accounting period, it's gonna be $50, okay? Then the next one, it'll be $100 because you'll keep on making this adjusting entry. And the next accounting period will be 150 and so on and so forth. You know, uh, 200, 250, and then you'll be at $300. Well, actually, that last one, you're not going to actually make it. But the balance in that account will be 250 at that time. Okay. Now, in that sixth month, notice this is month one, two, three, four, five. In that sixth month, when the note becomes due, okay, and you're, you're going to be paid back, you have in your interest rev interest receivable account 250 and in your note receivable account 5,000, right? Because you've been accruing that, in, that revenue, interest revenue that entire time. So now when the, uh, whoever you lent it to um, goes to pay you back, right? They're going to pay you back the $5,000 which was the original loan amount plus the $300 in interest. So they're going to pay you in cash $5,300. So you're going to be receiving that. So you debit your cash for $5,300. Okay, now debits have to equal credits. Well, what are you going to credit? Well, you're going to credit your note receivable for $5,000, right? Because, um, you know, they no longer owe it to you, right? So that balance is going to become zero, right? You're going to credit. You have interest. Uh, you have your interest receivable account. And that had a balance of $250 in it, right? Because that no longer should have a balance in it. And then you're also going to credit your interest revenue because you for $50 because that's the uh, interest uh, that is being earned in that sixth month, okay? And that becomes your journal entry for when that note, that note receivable gets paid off, all right? And that's basically all there is to it. Um, uh, so, you know, just as a quick recap, all right, which I'm apt to do, You know, um, someone borrows, someone wants to borrow $5,000 off of you. So you're going to, um, obviously you're going to debit your notes receivable for 5,000 and you're going to credit your cash because cash is going out. Right. Right. And that notes receivable is at 12% for six months. So this is your initial journal entry that you're going to make when you lend that person the money. Okay. Now each and every accounting period, because that money is not due for six months, but it's earning revenue, interest revenue, each and every month. Every month you have to make a journal entry to accrue your interest revenue. To do that, you're going to debit your interest revenue, I'm sorry, your interest receivable. In this case here, we had calculated that out to be um, 5,000 times 12% you know, it ended up being $50 a month, right? And we're going to credit my interest revenue account for $50, right? So each and every month that um, $50 is going to go into my in, uh, interest receivable account. So by the end of um, the fifth month, right, there's going to be a balance of $250 in that interest receivable account. Now, at the end of the sixth month, when the note becomes due, it hits its maturity date, that person has to pay you back. Well, what are they going to pay you back? They're going to pay you back the 5000 that they uh, that was the original principal, plus $300 of interest. So they're going to pay you $5,300 in cash. So you're going to end up debiting the cash for 
uh, $5,300. To offset it, you know, now they've paid back their notes receivable, so you're going to credit the 5000 so you no longer have a balance in your notes receivable uh, account. You have to look at your interest, re interest receivable account, which has a balance of $250 in it. Well, you, they're paying that all back, $250, right? And they still owe you the $50 in revenue for that sixth month, right? Now, so you would credit the interest revenue for the $50, and that would be your journal entry. Now, I'm going to throw just a little quick twist in here, okay? Both, you know, technically they're both right. I mean, the, doing it this way is, is the preferred way, okay? Because it's just saving you some time and trouble. But our notes receivable is 5000 okay? And then every accounting period, right, when I make my adjusting entry, I'm going to make an adjustment for the $50. So after the first month, my interest receivable is 50. At the end of the second one, you know, it's 100, 150, 200, 250. Now, based upon this is the, this here is the fifth month, right? I made and at the end of the sixth month, I make this journal entry when I receive the payment. But what I can also do is to keep things a little, uh, well, it, it all just depends upon you. What you could do is you could say, okay, at the sixth month, I'm actually going to make this journal entry also. Okay, so that my interest uh, receivable is now $300, which is completely owed. Right. But notice that because I'm making this entry, I'm, I'm hitting my interest receivable for the $50 just the same as I did over here. OK, so if I make this adjusting entry at the end of the sixth month so that my interest receivable is the $300, then I don't need to have this interest rev a credit to this interest revenue because the balance in my interest receivable account will be this $300 here. So all I need to do is just make uh, a credit to my interest, interest receivable for $300, okay? And then when they make the payment, that would be my journal entry for when they make the payment. Um, you know, to be honest with you, you know, the book shows you having the credit to the interest revenue for the, uh, the $50 and having my interest receivable being $250. And that's just fine. But the reality is, is in, um, if you're doing, when you're doing your work, okay, um, you, you know, you're going to make, well, it, it just all depends upon timing, okay? I mean, if it's the last day of the month and the person mailed you the check for the $5,300 and you received it, okay, well, then you'd have your choice as to whether you want to make the additional entry to um, record to accrue the interest revenue and then make this entry for the payment or but you know sometimes you're not going to have received that that check okay on you know on the last day uh, or just you know slightly previous to it so what ends up happening is is when you make that you know when you hit the end of the sixth month and you're closing out your books you're going to make the adjusting entry here for this amount okay and then when you receive the uh, the check in the mail, okay, maybe it's say the day after, then yes, you're going to make this entry, okay. If I receive the the check the day before or on the day of uh, it being mature, you know, then I would be more apt to just go ahead and um, hit my interest revenue for fifty dollars. And that would be 250 instead. I wouldn't make this adjusting entry because it's not, um, you know, I haven't gotten that far. I received my cash, and I'm clearing out the entries on my book, so I would not make this entry here. Instead, I would make it here. All right. So, um, you know, either way is acceptable because everything ends up being the same on your books. It's just a matter of efficiency, um, and uh, 
you know, knowing what you're doing. I mean, as long as you can follow it, both ways are correct. Uh, but the reality is, is that, um, you know, it, it'll happen as depending upon what happens in the sequence of events. Again, if I receive the check the day before or the day that it's mature, you know, I'm going to want to make the journal entry like this. But if I haven't received the check by the mature date, then I'm going to make um, my accrued entry here. And that, of course, then changes what I make for uh, my journal entry when I actually receive the cash. So both ways are right. It's just a matter of timing. Okay. All right. And so uh, hopefully you understood that. I'm not going to go back over it. Pause and rewatch the video. And if you still don't understand something, you know, feel free to uh, telephone and speak with an instructor. Um, but go back in uh, on the student community, um, chapter 10, chapter 12, right? There's the direct link. Um, you know, uh, rewatch, you know, watch those videos on how to calculate interest, you know, using principal times rate times time um, in order to be able to get the, the correct amount of, of interest. Uh, yeah, you saw me do a very simplistic uh, example here of, you know, 12% at six months. But remember, interest, um, you know, calculating an interest is all about time frames. And you have to, you know, whether it's days, weeks, months, or a year, whatever. Um, and so I recommend that you go back and rewatch those videos to refresh your memory. And, you know, if you're, you're not sure or if you're seeing it for the first time on how to calculate interest. All right. So with that said, I will see you in the next video for the focus on decision making, which is at the end of the chapter.